University in Oklahoma, where I received my master's degree. Worked out there for two years, went to Ohio State, worked at Ohio State for a year, then I ended up here last year and finishing my first full year with the Pirates. I was in West Virginia last year, um, which was an interesting experience. West Virginia, the travel is kind of killer with that, uh, that schedule. But I was with a lot of those guys that are going to be with you guys next year, um, which was pretty interesting. And you're going to get a great group of guys coming up with you guys. Um, kind of a, like what we do on a regular basis, a lot of these guys we only see in season. It's a little bit different role when we get guys in season. When we get guys in season, obviously the most important part is keeping them on the field, keeping them on the field, keeping them healthy, keeping them as close to 100% as you can be when you're traveling eight hours on a bus, which is pretty tough, especially with the little cramped buses that these guys got and with the food that these guys have. Um, that's one of our main one of our main issues that we have with guys is also the eating, which we control as much as we can. We work with the clubbies on getting the right menu for these guys, things like that. Um, in season, these guys, they uh, work out twice a week. Starting pitchers will work out two times in between each start, so on a five-day schedule, sometimes it'll be three times a week, sometimes it'll be twice a week, depending. Um, the position guys will condition twice a week. Starting pitchers will condition somewhere between three to four times between a start, depending on the guy. Uh, the relief pitchers, it depends on their schedule. Some guys are a four every fourth day. Some guys are an every other day. Uh, we don't really have too many back-to-back -back guys in West Virginia, which was their first full season. But basically my job in a first full season with these guys is really helping them to create routines. That's the hardest part is like for these guys in their first full season is most of these guys don't have a routine. Some of these guys, such as like Reese McGuire coming up, which you guys will see next year. Uh, Reese McGuire, a kid that came from high school, played GCL in some short season. He really has never played more than 50 games in a year. This year, we played 142 in West Virginia. Of that, I believe he played like, I want to say like 110, 115. So for a kid that's 19 years old, um, really physically not as developed as his skill is on the field, it's pretty tough for him to kind of get through that grind, especially at the catcher position. And so that's a big thing for him is we would show up the field at noon every day. They'd go noon to about 6 o'clock as a work day. At 7 o'clock they have their game until 10, and then they're not leaving the field until about 11 or 11.15 every day to come back at noon. So the most important part for these guys to develop themselves is from noon to six. In those six hours they spend every single day, either a couple hours with us on the strength conditioning performance side, um, between myself and the athletic trainers, we work as a, as a performance team trying to keep these guys healthy and developing. Um, on the field at different times, it's just getting a routine so you can come in and do the same thing every day, which kind of sounds like monotony but it really keeps your mind focused when you get to do the same routine every day and lets you focus on that game at seven o'clock. That's the most important part, but to get there, you have to have a certain routine to get you there every day to get yourself better. Um, off season, we actually have, it's kind of a different part about professional sports than college sports, which was a little bit new to me, is that mainly you see guys in season. It's tough to develop guys in season. With the season's so long, we can still do it a little bit. Off season's the main development. And actually, from our side, to give you a little insight, is our strength and conditioning coordinator on the minor league side was new this past year. His name was Carlo Alvarez. They hired him. He had been with the Indians and the Reds before then taking a high school position and working at a high school for 10 years. It's a little bit weird to say that you were at a high school and then you got hired by a professional baseball team but he had that professional baseball background. He built a high school in Ohio, actually in Cincinnati. It was one of the biggest high schools in the nation. And he built that program from the bottom up. So they brought him here to kind of change some things around and rebuild our sports performance, not from the bottom up, but kind of from the middle of the road to be the top of where it's at. So we're working on that right now. You guys will see the big building that's getting built over here. That's actually gonna be our new weight room for here. And basically we're trying to get guys more and more guys to come down. I actually have three from West Virginia that were with me 
that two actually move down, one is moving down. And so that's what we're trying to get more and more guys moving to Florida. One kid is in Rhode Island right now, which I think the more and more snow that they're getting, it's going to be easier to convince him to move down. Um, but so that's kind of what we're trying to do on our side. The off season is really, really important, and we try to individualize as much as we can. That's the biggest difference between our organization and a lot of other organizations is that we kind of have – we have numbers on everything, which other organizations do too, but we use it from our side to individualize as much as we can. So every guy that went home that we build a program for, it's an individualized program. Some guys aren't as much as others, depending on different problems or different potential problems that we see with these guys, but it's all individualized. When we have, I believe we'll have like nine guys coming in today, and that's why I got to take off a little bit early. We'll have like nine guys coming in today. Each guy when they come in from the warm up to different mobility work that they do to their workout is completely different from another guy. And so obviously that takes a lot of time. And that is why that a lot of time, this is um, a lot more in depth than a lot of different strength coaching that you see or performance coaching. We're not all just meatheads in there kind of throwing weight around. Every single one of us have a, has a master's. Not that that means we know anything else more than anybody else, but it does help as a qualification. Um, so just uh, some of the guys and some differences, just so you guys can kind of see what we do. Um, in West Virginia, when I had guys come in, and it was my first year to see a lot of these guys, and I'd never seen these guys before. Since it was my first year with the organization, I got to spend about 30 or 35 days with these guys where they came in early to spring training or came in during spring training. Reese McGuire, like I said, who you guys should see next year, he's a high school kid. Um, not really a weightlifting background from Washington. He not great physically developed. And so with him, it was really, really basic. We're learning the basics. We're getting a good foundation with him. Jacoby Jones, a little bit different. Eric Weiss, a little bit different. Those kids, uh, LSU, University of Texas, these guys came from big schools with big weightlifting backgrounds, so they were a little bit different. And the main difference between those two that we have to battle with is they have a lot of imbalances. And so those imbalances, we just got to kind of tweak with them, work with them. And the main thing with all these guys is just education. So we got to educate these guys and tell them why we're doing stuff. You can't BS these guys. They're smart. They go to the best professionals when they leave. We communicate with whatever trainer they have when they leave. And so if we communicate with the trainer once or twice during the off season, which hopefully it should be more than that, they have to know as they're going through a workout what's good for them and what isn't good for them. If we educate them as much as we can and basically take that full season to teach them as much as we can, then they'll know when they go to a trainer if they know what they're talking about, if they don't know what they're talking about, if, hey, this isn't that great for me because I have this problem or because I have this that I need to watch, I need to work on this, then we've done our job in season even if we don't see them during the off season. Um, something else that we do is we actually have um, some strength and conditioning camps that will bring guys in for one or two weeks during the off season at different times, so in December and then in January. Bring them in, kind of check on them, see so how everything's going, have them do a couple of workouts, watch them move, go through some different movement screening with them, some testing, just make sure everything's going great, make sure they don't need anything else from us, which is why we do calls as well. I actually just got off the phone uh, over the past week, I think I made like 40 calls to different guys just kind of checking in, seeing how they're doing, seeing how their family is, stuff like that. It's not all business. I mean, I definitely, we have a relationship with all these guys that are really important to us, and it's not just a business, at least it's not to me. And so we try to have a relationship with every guy. And so when I call them, it's not really, it's not really a business call. It's kind of me seeing how they're doing, seeing how our family is, seeing if they need anything from us, talking to their train, trainer they're working with at home, seeing if he needs anything from us to help him is ultimately where my biggest goal is to help these guys progress. So 
that's kind of how it works a little bit. Um, I know I kind of gave you like a little bit of a general um, quickly as I could, but yeah. Uh, 